Hey everyone. <laughs> Sub dudes. We're saw dudes. We have no idea if Don't anyone know. else is gonna randomly drop in. We'll see. No but idea. um we have some questions to answer because it has been a very long time since we last did an after show. I'm so I'm so excited! I watched <laughs> Cat in the Hat recently. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I could quote oh, that no. entire movie from fucking start to finish. Oh, Indoor Steriluge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we have some questions. <laughs> Though, I will say, we don't have a lot. So, if you want to ask us questions in the chat, I will note them and I will answer them later. Uh... And all of this, because you know, when we answer questions, you're probably going to come up with new questions. It's going to be a fun time. All right. Besties. First and foremost, how are we feeling about this season so far? Because we haven't actually talked about it yet. We haven't talked about it at all. No. Nah. Really like it. How are we feeling? I like it. I like it. Uh. <laughs> So go ahead, Ray. Go ahead, Ray. <laughs> I'm stressed. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I am constantly thinking back to when I wrote Monique's backstory, and you went, you stumbled upon something you weren't meant to, and now I'm reaping the consequences of doing that. <laughs> I, I, but, like, do you think it's kind of hilarious? Literally over a year ago. Now, over knowing, a year ago, you were like, yeah. "Oops." Now knowing that, like, like how truly powerful Typhon is as a figure, do you think it's hilarious that you were like, yeah? So we just like hilarious. fought, like four of us just <laughs> fought him one time and one of us died. I was actually just like, yeah, we'll just we'll. I was thinking, yeah, he'd fucking kill one of us and we'd dip out. And now I'm just like, we'd have gone nowhere near him. No, nope. we'd have gone nowhere near him. Because <laughs> nope. originally in my backstory, I was like, yeah, the I was part of the golden trio, like of the group, and. We went to go face off, uh, get an artifact, try and steal it from Typhon, and uh, he killed one of us. And then Maddie was like, I'm going to need to change that. I'm going to need to change that. You stumbled upon something plot. And I went, ah. Oh. And then I had to feign ignorance for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I had to... Bane ignorance for the whole of season. Every time someone mentioned Typhon, I was like, who? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> what's, 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 that? that? <laughs> what's that one Jim Carrey section where it goes, I'm reading what I saw. I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking what I saw, I get what I deserve. Germany? Who is that? <laughs> is that? Who is that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, that was... Uh, yeah, I'm 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 having a good time. I love D and I love I, I love consequences. I just love that this campaign is <laughs> me frequently going. I have picked on Monique too much. <laughs> and then the next session, I'm like, ah! I'm, her again. <laughs> I'm feeling like I should pick on Monique this session. Damn, y'all keen to Damn. see the sphinx? You, you fucking stabbed my dad, and I was just like, oh, this is how this is gonna go. I <laughs> gave. <laughs> Caring older big sister energy, and you went stab her dad. Let's just kill her. Dad. It's like oh, um, you're like hold on, this needs to be seasoned. Kill her dad, which is hilarious <laughs> because I remember like during one of the after shows, Justin being like, I think they're gonna kill. I think they're gonna kill Hermes. I think if anyone's dad's gonna die, it's gonna be Hermes. And I'm the back like this. Yeah. Because <laughs> I didn't know if it was going to happen, but I knew there was a possibility that Hermes would die. Because he was so involved. Yeah. I knew that there was a possibility. Yeah. And I just had those screenshots of you being like, I'm going to kill your dad. And, I, and then me replying with, that's a lot of talk for someone with a killable dad. <laughs> and I just screenshot oh, no. it. And that was in like May. And then I was sending it to the group chat being like, they have no fucking idea that I'm probably going to kill his dad. Question. Hold mm. on. You were like, yeah, I knew there was a chance this could happen. Justin, you hear that? Your dad's death was yeah. avoidable. It was avoidable. Ooh, Everything's avoidable, to be fair. Everything's oh, avoidable. I don't know if, Except for the plot. Well, Justin I don't know doesn't if, know if... Okay. 
Like, is Hermes like dead? I don't know. I don't know think he's dead. dead. The, the official well, answer to that question. To me, he's like off the board he's because gone. he broke the promise. Yeah, he's gone. Um, but as far as the season goes, like Maddie, you've done an excellent job being a DM and like giving Dang. us a really breathable, uh, livable world. Like the first season felt like I don't know, I don't know, very like reforming these relationships and friendships, and now mm. the second season is like putting them to the test. Are we actually friends? Are we actually like connected in the ways that we say that we are? Yeah. And I think everyone's doing like a really good job, like playing into that. So. Yeah. First so far, season, so good. First season was also me learning how to do actual plays, and you can tell. Mm. Yeah. Um, but. Mm -hmm. You did a great job, though. Thank you. you. Did a trial by trial by fire, and you came out on top, baby. I try. <laughs> Proud of you. Thanks. I'm glad you guys are having a good time. Yeah. You. Yeah. Uh. Okay. We have our first chat question. Unless Kiki, I don't. I don't actually think you answered. Did you answer? I can't remember. For which one? Um. The season two, huh? <laughs> Um, <laughs> having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I said I, I I'm enjoying season two. I do. Um, I I've mentioned this to you already, but I do think I enjoy I'm enjoying season two a little bit more than season one because season one did a really good job of putting in perspective just how little we are in the world. Um, because a lot of season one is go do the fetch quest, go do the fetch quest, go, and you're being ping ponged around by the gods, which is in a way I feel like it's designed to brew tension between you and the gods and really test that limit. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you are a pawn. Like, reinforcing Kaya's point, you are fucking pawn for the gods. Um, and if you still remain loyal to them after that, then you're, you're 100% loyal. Um, like, you're one of their good ones or whatever. But in this season, we're kind of seeing, like, what it's like to no longer be under their thumb. Because they're not around. They're fucking dying. <laughs> they are... So yes. it is. It's kind of interesting to Good. see. You like, understood my intention. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like, it, like, I guess in a way, it's like you know how like you'll be at school like uh your K through twelve or through primary school college. or whatever, and then you get chucked into college. You're on your own, and you're like, exactly. wait a minute. That was unironically exactly what I was going for. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and also, it helps yeah. for like establishing, uh. Just, like, how we, like, work together, where, like, I, it's, like, I think especially it was more of a comfort thing for me and for you guys, just, like, my first actual play or whatever, where, like, the start is a little bit railroady, so we all can just, like, feel a little comfortable and, like, get into it before we, like, get fucking toppled into a world. So it's a bit more, like, <sighs> okay, go. When you're with a new group a sandbox can sometimes become a, like a little fucking battleground because sometimes mm. people have different ideas of where they want to go and what they want to do and stuff. Being railroaded until we get to know each other and how each other play, mm -hmm. I think is always very beneficial for a startup yeah. group. That means that I get to do yeah, fucking put them in a box. chaos if we you shake them up real good. good. <laughs> very good. Don't All right. Back. First question from chat. You were going to say that. <laughs> First question from chat. What is everyone's favorite Greek god or character from Percy Jackson? I can say that like most people in the world, my favorite character in Percy Jackson is Percy Jackson. He's the best character. I have to, I, I have to kind of agree. Percy is my favorite. Aside from Percy, I'm pretty sure <coughs> in order it goes, um, it goes Annabeth and then it goes Leo. And I wish I had more time with Leo because I feel like he would have easily jumped the ranks otherwise. I um, yeah, I think Leo is probably my second favorite character because I related to him so much. But such, like, such I will never guy. forgive them for what they did to him. He shouldn't have ended up with Calypso. I think it would have just been so much Whoa, better. Spoilers. Ooh, spoilers. Read the book. Read it's, been the book. it's been out for ten years. It's been out for ten years. What's your excuse? I'm rereading. Oh. I'm rereading Heroes uh, of Olympus right now. Valid. Um, uh, who's Calypso? The first one, so just because like he had a whole thing where he accepted being the Forever Bachelor, and I think if he actually settled with that, it would have been a better character member. Anyways, I'm, Rian, I'm happy Justin. that he found someone. Mm. Uh, uh, Leo is number one, one hundred percent. Real, that makes sense. <laughs> it, yeah. What is this supposed to mean? Leo, Theo. 
<laughs> no, they are nothing alike. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> We'd be besties, but they are nothing alike. This is slander. How are they not well, alike? Can you explain to me in ways in which they're not alike? Uh, Theo's mom is alive. Um, <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> no we don't know that for sure. Your mom might be killable. <laughs> wait, what? Well, oh, say don't let a shift to someone with a killable mom. You would not kill my mom. Please you don't. Might. She's such a nice lady. Um, but yeah, I guess I can see why they're very similar. But, um, they're very funny. Leo, Leo is very funny. Um, but I don't know. What about you, Ree? I'm an Annabeth girly. I, I see that girl and I'm just like, mm. I look at Percy Jackson and I'm like, for someone so smart, you're so stupid. Uh, I love him. Low I love him. You're so he's, stupid. I love him. Wow. I, love you. Wow. <laughs> I, I do love him, but he. there are times when I'm like, Percy, that brain, the brain of yours, turn it on, turn it on. Uh, so Annabeth really fulfilled that when she would do exactly that. And, and that's what the, gave me the good vibes. Uh, I also think just she just doesn't get enough credit for how oh she's cool the best she is no, for real. Uh, like fucking when she held up the sky for so long, three, like, days. Days. three days, three days, my girl. Um, I'm also a big Selena Beauregard fan. I love her how nuanced her character is. Traitor. I love that girl so much. Shut up. <laughs> she she's left a traitor. The, she was, she was no. manipulated. I bet. Sure, I sure. would you. Would, would Theo call his ex girlfriend a traitor, or if she joined our yeah. side? And he might kill her. Man, what's with what's no. with Aphrodite Kevin people betraying the party and then <laughs> noping out no. last minute? Yeah, it's it's almost like they're the most emotional. So it's Sasha really Kevin. easy for them to get emotionally manipulated yeah. into things, right? All right, next mm. question from say Savi instead of say Lovey. Favorite oh shit moment so far. Okay. Favorite oh shit. Just in season two or just uh... in in general, I think. <laughs> like um I think Cause I I was the only one who didn't see it coming, but um in season two, oh Had shit moment. When my probably my dad died? What the <laughs> fuck, Maddie? <laughs> it was more of a it wasn't like a surprise of oh shit it was like a oh shit <laughs> not <me."> again <laughs> damn right. gotta get one of them every season I think my favorite um so far is one that happened in the most recent episode spoilers, spoilers in case you spoilers. haven't seen it okay when I stop um, doing this you can put the sound back on yeah uh, my favorite back. uh happened in last <laughs> my favorite happened in last episode in which it was revealed that typhon was puppeting persephone's body essentially and i was like oh fuck oh fuck uh, yeah yeah it was it was Creepy a fuck. Fuck. you yeah. can come back um, now my, yeah my secondary which isn't more of an oh shit moment it's just the of a like damn that hurt was uh when milo was talking to her mom and she went i get a lot of prayers that was Bars. That was fucked. bars. Like when Hannah said that, I was like, because <laughs> I just watched Bigo. <laughs> yeah, like, got a lot of prayers. <laughs> um, that I was also floored and how your portrayal, Maddie, was different than Hannah's portrayal, but both equally. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I can see both. You know, I think very different. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the only one we'd heard from was Nemesis. And so I'd sent the clip to Hannah and I was like, this is what I've done so far. Mm -hmm. You, but I want you to do whatever you want. Her portrayal of Nemesis with the fucking Jenga set was crazy. Oh, yeah. It was so good. And I remember I like, I just gave her some notes about how like Nemesis might be feeling in all of this and like her side, but I was kind of like, leave it up to you. <laughs> And I mentioned what had happened to like Hypnos and Morpheus and how like Nemesis is Morpheus is Hypnos' brother uh, sister. And she was like, oh okay, cool. And then gave the line where she's like, so you're siding with the person who kidnapped and tortured my braby brother. I was like Braby brother. It was very good. I think 
my favorite oh shit moment was when we kind of got the confirmation that both uh kiki and b had decided that uh ash and myla wouldn't be coming with us when they that would was be turning against wild us. Um, I think it was. Uh, I really, I liked the decision. I've, I'm always a big good. fan of like characters making good decisions for what suits them and stuff, and switching that up. Um, I think it was just genuine. I was like, oh, oh shit, this is this is going to have consequences. It's going to have ripples. And yeah. I remember just sitting there being like, oh no, oh no, oh my god. Uh, and, and I think I was like, I think like if I've watched it back or anything, I feel like I'm just sat there just like. Uh, buffering. You, you can just see the cogs in my head turning as I'm going, oh. Uh, immediately, yeah. I was like seeing everything that was going to happen because of this. <laughs> this actually. My, yeah. my favorite thing. Yay! My favorite thing was when Maddie was like, you know that you won't like come, like you can't keep playing these characters in the same way if you do this. Like, this is. This yeah. is the line. I'm I was like, like, yeah. I was like, guys, above table. I like, are you ready to like let go of these characters? You will be bringing in new characters, and you guys are like, yes. And yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> hey, fam. The question is, what more is your... NPCs to the roster? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite oh shit moment so far? Um, gosh. not sure maybe just the like oh it was the like very much easily alluded to answer if you know greek mythology of like it's echidna yeah like oh this is oh god (laughs) Mm -hmm. love okay from ultra square myths and legends are chock full of archetypes what's everyone's favorite archetype or mixture of archetypes to play e.g hero, outlaw, sage, innocent, etc. Mm. I I love playing like the mean girl archetype. Like I That's good. love playing the bitch archetype, the uh the one who's like really standoffish. Uh is one of my favorite tropes to play into because getting to play someone who begins a campaign at their worst always means that you're going to slowly explore them getting better and that's always so fun to dip and dive out of and it already gives you like a crutch to fall back on when you've got like tension moments and stuff and that sort of thing uh and i think it's a really really great shout so (laughs) uh, yes it's just so someone in the chat just said shout out to heroes of ashen but i i that's literally like lila because the character i play and she's a bitch at the start and she's still kind of a bitch we're heading into season three now and she's just softened she's like a soft bitch now like uh, she, she'll be a bit bitchy but she, you know she'll pat your head afterwards or something mm. you know she might apologize that sort of thing but it is really really fun to play and I, i've done it quite a few times now starting off in face campaign and frankenpunk and uh where i played just a really standoffish character and i went this is intoxicating <laughs> so much fun um yeah it's great i think i have i've done it i think twice more since i did it but uh kiki and i were in a campaign dm'd by the wondrous diner of the rose a little bit ago this was off stream and i did the trip of uh playing the like teacher or the caretaker like the caretaker of someone and it was so good because i loved I, I kind of say it's like the Catusis Clay archetype of oh yeah the my favorite part was being able to almost like being uh being able to do the the most the closest you get to being like the DM of a player of being the the player that can so easily like just draw the backstory out of any other player because you're just inherently mm-hmm. curious and care. So it like and I loved how other players would come to me and be like, "Can we have a conversation?" Because I was like, "You just want to talk about your backstory, don't you?" <laughs> okay, and I loved doing that. So I've done it a lot more. I think uh, I, I probably big surprise. I like playing very comedic characters. 
just at least like what? a person who can no. i know it's unheard of actually this is something i don't i'm very close to my That's chest about crazy. we have a shout out from minnesota in the chat as pay is talking yeah. <laughs> let's go <laughs> anyway i i i love playing especially the way that i usually form my characters is finding a bit to commit to and then expanding that from there because every time i'm like oh my gosh i love finding a bit of like you know this is this is who they are and then i stare at it for two seconds longer and i go that's incredibly depressing I love oh that. i love doing <laughs> that we, this is a bit now i'm this, gonna make it really and, depressing yeah like i in a campaign that i'm in with three uh just at, at table campaign uh i came in with like oh i'm gonna have a con man um and his ex ruined his life he's a door-to-door -door salesman a vacuum salesman uh specifically using his ex's brand and building them specifically so that they'll break down and it's like okay if we're looking at this for real you're not actually chipping away at your ex's reputation this is very very sad way to get revenge yeah and then <laughs> Yeah, and now, now the ex is dead. So maybe I did come out a winner. <laughs> I always Wait, come out on top. No, we did not kill him. We went to try and like bargain for like information with him because of like he he messed oh, up yeah. an invention, and then yeah, the, the head counsel of the one of the guys was like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna kill this guy. You're now indebted to us because we can easily frame you for this. I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got us a bunch of shit in a fucking town full Does of people. Oh, hey. I got us. Hey, hey. You're the funny one. You're the funny one. Hey, <laughs> hey you do the little haha -ha silly jokes. Hey, you do the little haha -ha thing. Hey, anyone else have an answer? Yeah, yeah, favorite like archetypes? Favorite archetypes? Um, I love, um, I love, I don't know if this counts. I love Lone Wolf and Cub very scary person has a very soft sidekick <laughs> you know i love that um i love so when who's your scary person is theo <laughs> specifically this one. no theo's the soft one uh no i don't know but um if <sighs> who is a scary one to theo's soft one? Ooh, i didn't even think about that <laughs> most likely i don't know maybe I'm pretty sure Theo's that the that soft one. He was called a murderer for like 14 years. <laughs> yeah, it is true. Um, I love, uh, I love bad guy in the first movie is now your ally in the second movie, and you have to work together to beat the threat. I love when that happens. And the villain's um, actually relieved to be just kind of a little stupid. <laughs> He's just a silly, goofy <laughs> little guy. I love that shit. Mm -hmm. Or I love. Um, stories where the main person has like a really big task or like knows something that no one else knows and like he, no one believes him. Like the sky is falling, kind of like the chicken. Leaf Cassandra thing. trope. Love yeah, Cassandra. Love that. uh, that's all I can think of at the moment. Love. <laughs> Kiki, uh, any answers off the top of the nog? Yeah, I, I kind of like to play like a combination of archetypes. I like to play the tragic and then also the kind. So like I, I call it tragically kind in which it's something has just like everything bad could ever happen. It's the Milo's law of shit. Everything bad that could have happened has happened to this person. And despite everything, they are either kind because they know no other way to be or because they're so incredibly naive that they think this is what they deserve. And oh, I just like no. to, I like to be able to portray that. Uh, I've had a few characters like that. Mila's one of the ones that is kind of like that, in which she still tries to be, she still tried to be kind despite uh, getting shit on by her, her mama. Gods. Still love the gods despite getting shot on that by them. Um, uh, Augury, who is in the campaign that uh, Maddie mentioned, is another one of them, in which had a whole bunch of bad shit happen, and just she's a warforged. She woke up resuming the task that she thought she was supposed to do and caring for these people around because she didn't know how to like prioritize her own needs over anything else um so, i had another character nah uh all right <laughs> we can move on 
Why I does... will yap all day about my characters. Don't let me. <laughs> That's alright. Why does Theo talk to me in French sometimes? Oh. <laughs> You're never gonna believe uh, this. <laughs> Theo speaks French. Um, <laughs> why? Uh, I, I, I think it goes back to making the most Hermes kid possible, and that he's Theo is a character that uses all the parts of the buffalo of Maddie's world. And I like the way that he doesn't, he's, he doesn't want to kill anyone, but he's quick to weaponize language in a way that like the other characters aren't. When it comes to like an insult or maybe something to goad people into doing something that he doesn't want to. And so I guess when he does that, it's, it's almost disrespectful to everyone else to be like, no, 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 the adults are talking. But like, and <laughs> Monique and Theo, have like have very similar experiences up until this point into this campaign so like it's almost as if like okay mask off what what are we really talking about now like you know what i mean <laughs> does that make any sense you know yeah yeah it makes sense monique is constantly like... insulted when you speak to her in french to insult her. <laughs> really no it's not to yeah insult, you like but speak like... to her in french she's like you never speak to me in french to just have a conversation with me you only ever do it to like <laughs> dig at me it's not I like it's the usually last for secrets of, from what I've seen. It, yeah, it wasn't to dig. It was like a okay. What do we actually like? Are we seriously not gonna do this? Are we seriously not gonna? Oh, what do we have to do? Do the my like, favorite the thing is thing you. Possible? It's always in front of. It literally is in front of yes. everyone else, and yes. they're just like. <laughs> and then exactly. we're turning right back in cool. intense French, and we're like, well, okay, something's <laughs> happening. <laughs> They're Something like, just uh, happened. Something just ha Monique, super calm. <laughs> Theo speaks French to her. <laughs> so, yeah, Theo, Theo doesn't mean it like as a dig. It's almost as like, okay. No, there are times where he's Mask just off. like said just, yeah, he's just said random bits and stuff and she's just, yeah. But uh, no, it is, it's, I, I do like that you said like he weaponizes language because it is something that I think is a very like Hermes kid like thing mm -hmm. using all the, the everything in your arsenal love mm -hmm. so now that i know that i'm gonna like just you know poke at monique and just <laughs> now i'm gonna do it more <laughs> all right so for the party for those of you who multi-classed what inspired you to do so was it more of a mechanic decision that you planned from the beginning or something that was been brought on organically through role-playing character decisions throughout the game i can tell you uh, why uh, Theo got multiclassed. Oh, yeah, please tell me. <laughs> uh, because we told you to. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> told we as a council came to a decision that you need some levels of fighter. <laughs> <laughs> the council has decided to become fighter. I'm not talking about being more <laughs> <pissed. laughs> Yeah. It was level. a group decision. It was a really group decision. <laughs> it was in favor of taking a feat. We all raised our hands. Uh, but yeah, Theo was all assassin rogue. And then everyone was like, you need to take a level in fighters to be more deadly. But I was like, Theo actually doesn't kill anyone. And I'm like, fuck that. And so yeah, he's now- You have to fighter. kill monsters. Yeah, true. I've killed, I've only killed that one lizard. That's the only thing Theo has ever killed. I can't wait. That one weird lizard. Yeah. That's it. But yeah. That's Honestly, nice. I think B mm -hmm. has gotten the most how do you want to do these? This is this is Interesting. Just thinking yeah. back, I feel like anyways. Uh Faye. Oh, uh she's full of rage. I I I think it was it also kind of bloomed from like after at the end of season one. Uh, I think possibly the same night or same day for Maddie. Maddie sent me a bunch of voice memos of like, is it crazy? Wouldn't Jezebel be so upset that like Myla and Ash left like this? That's so, <laughs> that's so like, what a betrayal. How does Jezebel feel about this? And I went, well, I think she'd probably be pretty full of rage. Uh, creeper, creeper, creeper. Um, and so I threw on just some levels of barbarian, and I was like, "Yeah, she's she's full of rage. She's no longer coping." Yeah. Hey, hey, yo! 
It was literally. We did it. It was me sending you a voicemail oh, wow. going, Hey. <laughs> Do you remember how you tucked in your baby brother last session? Isn't it cool that like mm. Ash only cares about their sibling and wishes that your sibling was dead? <laughs> and you were like, no, because I think I just sent you a voice message and I was like, <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> and you just went, what, what oh, did I walk a little into? tree. Hello? We're talking about why uh, people multiclassed. Yeah. I just love the, oh, a little treat? <laughs> a little treat <laughs> for, for dinner? <laughs> Yeah, and then you were like, I'm gonna take a level of barbarian, and I was like, fuck it, slay. I'm, I'm waiting for, like, just that becoming, like, a redeem thing of, like, a notification of, like, a little treat <laughs> on stream. For me. Lovely. For me. Why, why is Osura multi-class, dearest Kiki? Hmm. Sarah is multi-class. I built her multi-class. Mm. Uh, she is a... Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, she is a rune knight Jesus fighter. Jesus Christ? <laughs> no, I got sound in my ear. Um, she's a rune knight fighter and a way of mercy monk. And it was I was throwing it back and forth for a while of like what I wanted her to be. I knew that I wanted the martial classes because I didn't want to play another ranger. And I kind of didn't want to fully go with the ar with the archetype of like, oh, Apollo, Apollo's kid. Oh, Hunter of Artemis, you have to have a bow as your only weapon. Um, and I kind of didn't want to stick with that. So I went more into like martial classes. I figured uh, in the early days of the camp, they were mainly just training you to be more like soldiers. So that's where fighter came from. Um, and then after she joined the hunters, I was initially thinking about making her a paladin, um, a paladin of devotion because she's devoted to Artemis. But um, I felt like that was a little bit too much of what I wanted. So I kind of wanted to reel back on that. I didn't want to rely on a weapon. Um, so we went into Way of Mercy instead and that kind of tied into being able to heal and also being able to fight real good and knowing the weak spots of the body um, in order to flick hands of harm. So it just kind of like and also like mended the better. poison disease aspect because Apollo yeah, used to exactly. like descend plagues upon people. It's exactly. Cool. The hands of harm really just like, if I cannot fix your body, I'm going to know how to fuck it up. You all, I live for it. Yeah. So good. And as you get at the moving on. <laughs> For B and Kiki, what cool new things do you get to do as Annika and Osara that you couldn't do as Ash and Milo? Like, that you really uh, like especially? Uh, hit things? I get to be a bitch. I, not, I don't think I hit things, like, at all as Ash. Like, there was the thing for poor, poor Ash. Ash tried their best. <laughs> but Ash, Ash uh, did a little, little D6 and that was about it. But Annika, Annika can really hit things. Yeah. It's a D10, and then I got that smite in there. Oof. I so, remember yeah, Ash was pretty good damage. during the Hephaestus robot fight. Ash was pretty good during yeah. that fight. Yeah. So it's like you and Kaya like, were like, like on either side of a robot. Just fuck yeah. Yeah. I was relying on a lot of like spells and stuff like that. That's the only mm. thing. But I, I, I enjoyed both. But the, yeah, just things I didn't get to do before. Stab. <laughs> it's very good. Kiki? Also having auras and stuff, just kind of like being able to be like um do a lot more like support things like through auras, like passively. Cause with with uh with Ash, like I did have like a lot of like support things, because that was kind of how I how I built them. Um but they were like a lot of active spells. Um, whereas for Annika, it's a lot of kind of like passive things, which is nice. Like the the plus three to to spell yeah. saves and stuff like that. Like you with the dead feet of me. Everyone get with the dead feet of me. Don't you walk away from me. <laughs> it was you walk the away from me. I, I will sentinel like, your ass. <laughs> I was literally just like, Annika, do you have an aura? And you went, Oh my god, I do. <laughs> yeah, I like, you guys get plus three. <laughs> You're gonna need it. <laughs> Give it to me. Imagine if we were both paladins and gave them all a plus six. Um, actually, but... unfortunately, paladin auras don't stack. Yeah, that's don't fucked stand. up. Yeah. That's fucked up. In my personal opinion, they lost signal. 
Or... Oh no, we lost. Oh, I love that it's face pretty... that Rhea's frozen oh, that on. Yeah. Though. That was a great oh, face. Even... It was a good yeah. pose. Yeah. Uh, Kiki, it's a good what meme about you? pose right there. I'll screenshot that in there. Um, in terms of mechanics, I do feel like I can be like more involved in the fight. Um, also, Osra just has some neat features that I think would be very beneficial to this group and trying to meander their way through the world. Um, but I wanted to be able to play somebody that had a different perspective than mm. those who were born and raised in Camp Aya. Like, I wanted to be able to bring someone in that has years of experience, has been through maybe something similar, or just seen similar things happen before and was able to kind of, like, apply that shit to uh, the modern day and be like, hey, so, like, not the best idea trying to wrestle Tassel with Typhon. Like, just a, just a consideration. People die sometimes. Suck it up and move on. Like, we got we got shit to do. The world does not stop spinning. Exactly. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And, like, I think also uh, the good thing about, like, Way of Mercy Monks then also having it multi-class with something else. There's so many different things you could do during combat, so you get a little variety. Mm -hmm. Variety is the spice of life. Alrighty. Electrum says, I'm still catching up, so apologies if this has already been asked or addressed in a previous one, but what are everyone's thoughts on the 2024 rules? I find them positive. Do you have any plans to make content using them? I think so far we've we've stayed pretty 2014 for this campaign. But yeah. Anyone have any strong feelings? Could I just saw <laughs> Justin shake his head? I don't have any super strong feelings because I literally have not read the book yet. <laughs> but it feels as though if you're going to make a big sweeping changes, make more changes. Get a little more dang. You know, if we if we have the ability to just keep on playing normal 5e, people are going to keep Cuts. doing that. You know? <laughs> I think that's, I think that's the beauty feelings. of D&D. <laughs> Justin said Reed definitely cowards. looks like she has some feelings. Ahead, Rhea, Rhea, I don't think you have any feelings actually. You know what? I think I think you're perfectly fine with the the twenty twenty five really? four rules and have no nothing at all to say about it, right? It's fine. It's crazy uh, that warlocks are just given the same old backstory, which is you actually have no idea who your patron is until your level three. Yep. It's crazy. Yep. You, they yep. just take yep. away the whole aspect of you having your own backstory. That's so crazy. Rangers still suck. Oh my god! Wow. So god, Rangers. Druids, so Druids <laughs> having no, fun, unique the things they can turn into. No, no, no. You can oh, turn into no, no. three things and you and just yes, flavor no it. No artifices uh, again. No spider climb anymore. <laughs> I feel like when it comes to the 2024 rules, there's a lot of things that were simplified, which makes it a little bit easier on the DM side, but it makes it like less mm -hmm. personalized. Like you can't, you can't make it as in depth on the player side, if that makes sense. Like it's not they, as. Uh, they did add. Really some cool things, but like it was, one of, it was one of those things. But oh, from what I've seen, up, I hate it. oh, they wait, wait they changed spell? Oh, hold on, hold on, I got it, I got it, fucking get, saved. What I they, what they, what they what fucking do to my get favorite spell? No, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna pull it up for you. It's right my favorite spell. I'm a wizard fade. You know I love counterspell. What did they do to my boy? I love. You've been abjured. So for counterspell. Real quick for just the viewers at home, they can yeah. sometimes hear car sounds. That's because there's races on. Continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also, if you guys want to drop some inspo for uh, the next two sessions that we won't be necessarily live for, please feel free to. Anyway, um, for counterspell, level three abjuration, sorcerers, warlock, and wizards gets th get this, so really no change there. Um, it is still a reaction. You, mm -hmm. you attempt to interrupt a creature in the process of casting a spell. The creature makes a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, the spell dissipates with no effect, and the action, bonus action, or reaction used to cast it was <laughs> is wasted. If that spell was cast with a spell slot, the spell slot isn't expended. So they get Wait. their spell slot back. I'm sorry, they don't get the- So they get to keep the spell slot, and it's a con save? Yeah, I it, can't it, save. it, it makes me sweet. upset so much. So, so here's the thing. It has been explained to me, and it makes a little bit more sense on why they changed it to be this way, but I do not agree with it. So the reason that it was changed this way is because monsters, as they are given in like the monster manual that's coming out and the DMG, they have like instead of spell slots, they have one per day. So like they can use counterspell once per day, or like they they have like 
mm -hmm. magic missile they can only use once per day kind of thing. So they get that once per day back or, or expended use back. However, I don't like that it's a fucking con save because you know, your your spell save DC can't get super high until you're a higher yeah. level, unless you're a master min yeah. maxer. I'm sure Maddie could figure this out. But um, <laughs> like your spell con, save DC on average is not- one. Yeah, yeah. On, on average, uh... your spell save DC is not gonna be higher than like an 18. So to have their con yeah. against your spell save, I hate that. I would much prefer if it was a contested con check, like that I'd be more okay with because then it's the battle of wills there. But yeah. I don't like that it's them making a con save against okay. your spell Okay, and if DMs I'm think sorry. that I like, I hate counter spell because like it's too powerful and it just ruins things for me, you don't no, know how to run a fucking encounter because here's the thing, as a wizard man oh. who loves counter spell, this is what a good DM who is battling me does, which is does a million things in one a round, so I'm thinking, fuck, when am I going to use my singular reaction to do this counter spell? And then I'll counter spell a fourth level and they'll come in with the ninth level power word, kill it, I'll wanna kill myself. Like that's so, okay. how it works. <laughs> so sorry, I'm trying still trying to wrap my head around this con save. So what what sets the DC for this con save? It's your spell it's, save it's DC. Your spell save DC. That's that's the I'm, DC I'm sorry. for the concept. At the high levels, spell when it's I'm gonna that it becomes the side null and void. I just like as an example, I just pulled Literally. up the Zariel stat block. Zariel has a is a has a twenty eight constitution, which is a plus nine. So she like mm -hmm. that's you just she's never gonna fail a con save ever. That's insane. Literally, like is it? I don't have to throw a joke out here. Uh, yes. That the way that uh, B said it's, it's so a heated. con save. Reminded me intimately of who's Josh Groban? Kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't been able to stop I thinking about that. Love that. I can't <laughs> say kill yourself. Kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's genuinely like, I feel like I will say this till the day I die 2014, so DD 5e was mm -hmm. the best pathway into DD. It was the most understandable, oh, the most easy. I think yeah, it had accessible. the first rules. 2024. D, D they've basically gone yeah let's switch to the, let's make this simplified for people let's simplify it for the newcomers i'm like no it's a game it's got mechanics D learn the mechanics you can bend and break rules once you understand how the rules mm -hmm. work because that way you don't infringe on other people's builds you don't want to go mm -hmm. into a game and go yeah i'm happy to let you guys all um hit with these random objects you're finding oh but you wasted a feat on tavern brawler oh that's a bit shit i guess that you know there's ways to do it and stuff that's the whole point of it yeah but the the, the things that they're doing now the listen counter spell there are ways to get around that as a dm here's here's an example there are so many monsters that have spell like abilities how many of you guys have been fucked over by a spell like ability which doesn't yep. have because it's not a spell, spell. it's not it's, a yeah. spell they'll say it, it's a racial it's, feature yeah. and you're like mm -hmm. it's a racial feature you know and they can get more than once that a day they can get twice yeah. a day and stuff you know and that's how it is the whole point of something having once a day and you expending okay, something to just to, to get rid of it, it it it's a balance out in that sense it means you're achieving something yeah. even if you're like a utility caster or something like that it gives you an achievement by doing this con save shit, it's it's fucking bullshit. I'm not gonna be paying attention to it. Honestly, it can go kill itself. I will burn the book. Um, I will this burn concept the book of counter spell kills a mess. Con save kill yourself. Counter makes me this angry. Counter spell makes this, me this angry. What they've done to paladins. What they've done to paladins. I. I yep. was so angry. I stopped reading the book. They sent me the special edition. I've given the first edition they gave me away. I've kept the special edition and I looked at it and I got so angry. I crumpled the paladin page. It's ruined. It's ruined in my book. I got Damn. so angry. I scrambled. So because they've just fucked. It's, it's, like rogues get fucked. Rogues should be able to do more than one sneak attack per turn because honestly, what, the fact that that doesn't stack up as they- The fact they that they level, don't get they multiple do? attacks, period, is strange. So, hold me. on, hold on, hold on, mm. real quick. So what they did do in 2024 with rogues is they gave you basically two-handed fighting without using it as a bonus action. So technically you do get a secondary attack as long as you're carrying a lighter finesse weapon in your outfit. 
Just, but, yeah, that's great, but you don't but get that's your a free sneak attack. attack more than once. It's, it's just, you don't get your sneak attack It's always been once. like that. Which, mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And that sucks. And that's something they brought up. And they were, and people compared it to paladins, because they were like, paladins get to do divine spikes whenever they want. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely right. You know what? Instead of elevating rogue to a higher level of play, you we're going to take what paladins do. Part of their core, part of their core fucking, part of their core... It's like Build? counting down ascending spells. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna destroy it. That's it. Um, and uh, <laughs> they just gave smites to every other class. Horrible. And Anyways, and <laughs> oh we're yeah, moving they, they, on. They, they, they gave the smites to everyone. Everyone, we're moving. We will, we will have a different we'll discussion where we all just yeah. You have to assign, not just it's a thing just... you get now. Exactly. All it right. Out and My goes, next question is given to us <laughs> to by Justin. <laughs> Actually, Justin gave us like ten questions. You ready? Oh god. Yeah. Oh, can I ask them? Oh, do you want to ask them? Yeah. yeah. Do it. Yeah, I want to ask my own questions. Okay, I have to go to. The uh, where to go? 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 After show Q and A. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I'm so ready. <laughs> Number one. How do the new members of the team, specifically Asura and Annika, feel about the group? So I don't know if we really feel anymore. Mm, yeah, we don't feel anything, <laughs> oh my actually. Gosh. Sorry. Well, we don't actually well, feel anything everything. about the party. We literally can't. Sorry. Whoopsie. Um, to be completely <laughs> honest. Hi, Why are we all drinking? <laughs> oh, We're chugging. Um, to be like completely honest, I don't think that Osra has too strong of feelings towards like any member of the group in particular. Um, mm. I think like she sympathizes with with you guys on a level because you all just lost Sasha, um, mm -hmm. and some of you have lost your dads, which is rough. Um, mm. I do think that Theo annoys the fuck out of her. But also, yeah, it kind of has to, it, if you see, here's the thing, it kind of has to go with, she has been with only women for the past, like, century, and the first guy that she hangs out with is Theo. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Theo <laughs> going through a breakup of a situationship and watching his dad get murdered and deflecting it by, let me fuck around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully I don't find out too much. Annika, how do you feel about the group? Before, like, pre-feelings wipe. Pre-feeling wipe? Uh, so, okay. How do they feel about the group? So, uh, uh you know, but it's pretty chill. Uh, we have history. It's fine. Uh, we're, we're, we're friends. It's fine. So, yeah, definitely, definitely has the, the closest, uh, and they were roommates. Uh, definitely has the closest, uh, connection with, uh, Monique. Um, Jezebel is to to Annika is uh is definitely the kind of person where I'm like, hmm, battle strategy wise, I'm glad you're on my side. Why do you keep getting mind controlled? Stop that. <laughs> I don't like when you're not on our side. <laughs> I cast fear. <laughs> uh, Annika's like Annika's like, it's great to have Jezebel on our side. <sighs> <laughs> when she is on our side. <laughs> yeah, when she is on her side, love her. Wonderful. Amazing. Um, for uh, Theo, uh, <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? Annika has no. Spent give it to me straight. Of give it to me raw. Annika has spent a lot of time around Ares kids. Yeah. Theo somehow has a bigger ego <laughs> than any Ares kid. Is he? Is it the ego? You talk. It's yeah. the I can fight God. <laughs> I can fight it. I can fight God. It's like, you, no, you can't. You, no, you by can't. The, by the grace of the gods, did not go down with Typhon. And we're like, can I get a hit in? Can I hit that? <laughs> no! We're like, no! <laughs> no! Listen, literally had to carry you out of there, kicking and screaming. Um, it just fucking did that, like, God, what is it called when you have a baby and it's, like, wrapped up? <laughs> Swaddle. That. Swaddle. Swaddle, not yeah. swaddle, like the the over the shoulder wrap. There's a name and for then, it. I can't remember. And then for Osra, um, yes, if you're, Asra... I can't be Bjorn. <laughs> for uh, 
for for Asura, it's definitely that thing of uh, Annika definitely respects uh, their their fighting skills, and I think outside of that, hasn't gotten to like see too much uh, from them. But it definitely has a mad respect for their for their fighting skills and for definitely being sometimes sometimes just 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 being on the side of reason sometimes, which sometimes this group is not, which makes Annika be like. Why? Why are we doing this? <laughs> so it's <laughs> nine times out of ten, I could just turn to, to Asura and be like, "Please, please, <laughs> please help like, me." We're not, we're not getting a we're mortal out of like, hell. That's thank not you, happening. thank no. you, please. Um, yeah. Nice. Question number two for Maddie: How much of what has happened has followed your original plan? A bit of it, because I had like. Because I've, I've kind of explained this before, that I've always known what's been happening in the background, like, while... Oh. <laughs> just so y'all know, they can see the chat when it comes up, because I'm screwed. Uh it just said, Re, you look EP, so it wasn't actually bad or anything. But just so you know. No, I'm all good. <laughs> like, god, chat's so fucking I dry tonight. <laughs> I hate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the high twitch in the corner. Bless. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I always knew what was uh, happening in the background and it was kind of just like letting the players do whatever they were going to do because I always knew what like the villains were getting up to or whatever and their actions would affect what the villains were doing but I knew what their plans were and what their intentions were. So that kind of meant that I kind of- I had a plan Definitely, it's kind of what you learn to do as a DM, is you know what you want to do, and it's about making it work. Like, if they skip past an encounter, mm. you put the encounter somewhere else. Like, it, you just learn to adapt. People that are like, oh, my session got wasted as a DM, I'm like, baby, you don't know how to adapt. I'd be taking that shit, I'd be reskinning it, and it's going somewhere else. So kind of in a way... Of the way that I, my DMing style, I guess everything went to plan. Apart from all the times it didn't. Does that answer your question really vaguely? Yes. Very terrifying that you were like, everything's going according to plan. No matter what they do, we're still fucked. Um, <laughs> but yes, good job, Addy. <laughs> Number three, I have a very hard-hitting question. Very serious question. Where the fuck is the familiar? It's <laughs> a very serious question. I don't even remember its I name. I gave you that familiar. Its name uh, Captain is... Captain Charmont. No, it's, uh, yeah. Lieutenant Charmont. Lieutenant Charmont. Also, I was gave you guys? you guys a free he familiar was... to use, and yeah. you have never used him. Yeah, <laughs> was I with you guys right before the... Yeah, no. Right before Typhon's fight? I think he's still just no. a spider in my hoodie. No, he, when you guys went back, I think he went back to Cersei. I think he's with Cersei. I? I remember somebody sitting down and talking with him before fight. I, that's why I, I just can't remember. Okay, the then way. I think Jezebel has him. Because I, I remember hey. I was the last person to interact with him. Oh, I yeah. have a meme I need to make now. <laughs> Please don't kill the familiar. Very special to our hearts. Lieutenant Sharma <laughs> during the hurricane. No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this just. Is, this is what's gonna happen. Typhon Lieutenant Sharma is I have, I have someone very dear to you. And we turn and go, Asura? Asura goes, No. Annika? No. Annika. Monique? No. Monique. Theo? No. We're all here. The, the familiar. Oh, no, that's where he you went. wouldn't. No, <laughs> that Lieutenant Shaman is sprinkles the sprinkle the fucking ferret. He is sprinkle the fucking ferret. <laughs> no, he's not a ferret. He's a weasel. Well, yeah. like you forget that you were like oh. in water, it, actively in hurricanes, and he just magically survives. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you close one. Please. Um. End it. Maddie, who would you cast to play Typhon, Persephone, and Morpheus, and Sasha? in the movie of our campaign. Okay, well, Sasha uh, already has a canonical one because I've... Ooh. Sasha has been somewhat of an OC of mine for a very long time. And the, back when we used to have face claims, 
Shout out to people who used to do lit RPGs. I was one of you. And his was um, Maxence Dene Fouval, who was in Scam France. So, yeah, him. Oh. That's Sasha. He's, I think he'd be nice. a, a lit, just a touch too old. Oh, no. He's probably in his, like, early 30s. Yeah, I think We could just is. age up Sasha a little bit. It's fine. He can still play him. Um... Yeah. Typhon would probably be a voice actor, and it would be someone who can do very low and very, like, very scary, otherworldly, but also eerily calm sometimes, but also- Matt like, Mercer, get in the comments. <laughs> get in the comments. Oh. Travis Willingham, yeah. get in the comments. I honestly, Travis, I think, would, because, like, Matt has the thing that he is good at, I think Travis would be very good as Typhon, because he can get yeah. low and terrifying. Travis, so- yeah. Very good voice yeah, actor. Yeah. Tank, bro. Yeah. He's insane. Yeah, yeah. So I think he would do an excellent job as Typhon. Persephone? Hmm. I'd have to think about it. Because she has to have the two sides where she can just play normal Persephone, but also play Typhon as Persephone. So probably any actress who has done like psych horror in the past. I think would be good. What about like, Lupita? Oh, Lupita would be incredible. She'd be so good, right? Because she could get that, she could get that like, good psycho shout. eye, but also be that so soft. Oh, no, because did you guys see Little Monsters where she played the primary school teacher during the zombie apocalypse? Oh, so yeah, she, can so give, good. she can give sweet and she can give terror. That is an incredible shout, Rhi. Love that. Great and shout. What was the final one? Morpheus. Morpheus. Okay. Morpheus is, he's meant, uh, he's very androgynous to me. Uh, very like angelic okay. and soft, kind of ageless in a way. So I don't know. Hmm. Cause he's, I, to me, he, he looks like a, what you think of when you think of an angel. So kind of like very, very beautiful and a little bit androgynous and soft and kind of dream like Aww. they don't exist yet it would probably be like ah oh, god i don't know have you seen um okay. have you seen sandman on netflix because there is the person who plays morpheus in that show oh i think but i don't know if it's the right that. vibe anybody's curious it's a very fucked up show so i don't oh, recommend yeah. it if you have mm -hmm. if you're sensitive yeah. in like any way to triggers maybe but, but yeah maybe long hair i i think they you would find someone oh. um john snow hmm. john snow is morpheus uh maybe the guy oh, he's very masculine but i think he could pull it off is the guy who's playing lestat in the newer show Ooh, I think he, uh, actually yeah, I would yeah, cast him. Funny. I'd cast him as Apollo. Mm, the guy mm. who's being possessed by the soul of the character Lestat. I'm familiar with that. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, who would we cast as Hermes? Because Hermes mm, got a no Miranda. <laughs> no. Shut uh, up. No. <laughs> Nathan Fillion, of course, the obvious choice. Um. Uh, not not Lin Mel. Man, uh, Lin Manuel Miranda. Um, Hermes. Do they have to be I mean, dead or alive? Leo. Uh, I don't know. If I'm anybody. Sa Sam. Sam. Oh God, what's his name? Plays Falcon. Yeah. <laughs> Sam's not his actual name. <laughs> Anthony Mackie. That's oh, why. Anthony, yes, Anthony, Anthony Mackie, Mackie would be so good. He'd do a good job. He'd be so oh. funny. He looks like he always has like a little secret. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, <don't> know, <laughs> so I think any. I, I love think. That man. Uh. I, I love the, and I think this is a very good technique of uh, casting the gods as extremely famous people, because it makes you go, oh, they're important. Like, if yeah. you cast, like, Hera yeah. as, like, Angelina Jolie, it would, it would hit so fucking good, because you're just like, god, she's intimidating. <laughs> Hell mm, yeah. Honestly, that would be so good, yeah. truly. Um, they've already casted Athena. My, and also wouldn't have fit with Annabeth's casting, but my oldest casting for um, 
Athena was uh, Gemma Chu? Gemma What's... Chan? Gemma Chan, thank you. I got actresses mixed up. So pretty. Gemma Chan as Athena so would have gone fucking crazy. Anyways. Next. <laughs> um, oh, what was the other option the Hecate was going to give the group? And how much time would have been taken? Ooh, so um what was instead going to happen is it would have been a skill challenge to try and escape a very difficult skill challenge i think it would have been five successes two failures uh and then if you had failed the skill challenge you would have had to fight a horde of undead whoa so i think you picked the best option guys (laughs) yeah yeah, like she said, they both came with risks, and there would be people who would not want you to leave. Yeah. What? That's crazy. Hmm. That's crazy considering we're the darling of uh, the <laughs> underworld. <laughs> Apparently, only on one side. Yeah. Um, which demigod would do best in Netflix's The Circle? <laughs> What's the circle? I Jezebel. Think Jezebel. Jezebel. Next question. Jezebel. Jezebel. One Jezebel million. Big... Like... Jezebel had what's, Big Brother what's... yesterday. <laughs> what's okay. the circle? Have you seen Big Brother? Yeah. Is it like Big Brother? Imagine, but imagine Big Brother, but you can't see the other contestants, oh, and yeah, you Jezebel. can lie about what you look like. Jezebel. It's social social media, <laughs> Big Brother. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's absolutely Jezebel. Jezebel's fucking winning that shit. Jezebel's like, Jezebel's leaning into like a full character of like, yes, my name's Kyle. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Kyle McKyle, and somehow people still believe her. Of like, <laughs> yeah, I see and her everyone, there. the audience watching her is like, we don't understand how anyone believes her. Like, what? <laughs> She fully doesn't answer her phone for like a day and she's still doing well. <laughs> we gotta get go oh Jezebel on the circle. But which Tammy God would be the best player in Survivor? Probably mm. Myla. I think Monique. Monique or Myla? Oh, Myla? No, Monique. Myla is a ranger who lived in the forests of Ayaya by herself for like five years. Here's the thing, it's not about just the joking. actual survival. I don't I don't know if survival is so like, together. Oh, together. that's <laughs> true. Right? That, that yes. that's the problem, is like my brain is like the technical aspect. Like if it was, I was naked and like afraid alone. type situation. If it was alone, yeah, if it was Milo. Like, <laughs> if it was alone or something, I would say that like Osra and Milo would do well. Um, if it's, I, Osra would if win, actually. That's so true. Uh, no, here's the thing. Here's the problem. Survivor is a team game. This and is if true. she does not know the team, oh. she's not going to do it. Okay, she's, so getting then Survivor, she's getting voted off. She's getting voted off. Survivor, Annika, because Annika brings. I was going to say, I was going to say team game. And Annika. the charisma. Yeah. And she's I was also say, useful. Annika, yeah, she wouldn't get voted off for ages. I, mm-hmm. I do think that, like, the people who would be, like, in the top for. For Survivor would probably be like probably on separate teams even Jezebel because Jezebel can work with a fucking team and can manipulate the hell out of everyone. Um, mm. Ash would be up there. Um, oh. I feel like Moni would be a backbone, but would also probably be one of the ones in which some people like get rubbed the wrong way and they try to vote her out multiple times. Oh no, Monique um, would be the one who's like, "We have a team and we all trust each other." And then everyone betrays her, and then her yeah. leaving. Yeah, hers yeah, is okay, the yeah. really <laughs> emotional elimination where everyone's crying. I I, it, yeah. I was fully just like Monique would be the one where they're like, "She's just an easy person to get rid of," but this sucks. Um, um and stuff and she would be like i understand i'm not going to take it personally and stuff and that would make people even more upset and feel more guilty about it yeah. mm-hmm. because then the audience would fucking hate them too mm-hmm. yeah i'd pay to see survivor with jezebel and shannon <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> no, they're, they're opposing they're opposing team leaders <laughs> and i f- i also feel like theo would be really good at the games but yeah, that that part. like lone wolf factor is gonna kick in, and people are gonna get really mm. aggravated with the we need to do this as a team, and yeah. it's like, but we want, and they're like, okay, not the fucking boy. Hear me out, though. Uh, the only it, yeah. it, it, oh, go ahead. Yeah, it would be that thing where like the the other contestants would get so mad at the 
I'm gonna be like, this motherfucker. Audience fucking oh, loves them, though. He, Audience oh, yeah. like, that's the best. We love the idol. He's also found yes. every, every single one. They, they cannot get rid of The only way out. Theo survives <laughs> is with the immunity idols. He makes it to the top it. three because he time. finds every <laughs> single one. Every week, no, every week, everyone would vote for Theo, except Theo would vote for someone else. He would play the immunity idol, and every vote against Theo would be null and void. And one person Theo voted on gets eliminated. Oh, mm -hmm. it would be so brutal, like, but that's the only way he This person <laughs> spit in my food. <laughs> them out. They looked at me kind of funny. Pretty I think much. this person hates me. And then if Theo got to the top two, you know how it's like, the other players come back and they vote on the winner. Theo's never gonna win that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <no>. Pissed everyone <laughs> off. <laughs> but uh okay. Next question. Do Incredible. Kiki and B know what's happening to their other characters? Nope. Wouldn't she kind like of. to know? I do. I do. No. I really do actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, I think Maddie might kill me if I told you. Oh, Maddie, is there any hints you can give about what's happening to the other characters? They're both dead. Well, yeah. damn. We're Rest gonna find their bodies. Nope. And they nope. weren't in Elysium. Uh oh. Did you think I was joking womp, about womp. Oh no! <laughs> womp, womp. I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if Milo was womp. actually dead when you said that. I was like, oh. And guess uh. we'll never know until you see a body. Yeah. yeah. Somebody give love to her dad for her. <laughs> Okay. Um, how did Osra's friend actually die, and why did Osra choose the hunters? Oh. Wouldn't you like to know whether no? Um. Uh, he died of blood loss, and that's about as far as I'll go on that. What? This is Q and A. Ask me you in character, out, bitch. You gotta ask in character. No, I was gonna say that's God. an in character question. Fine. Blood loss is crazy, by the way. That is, that is some and... wild answer. Damn. <laughs> it's it's not wrong. That's so no. fucking funny. It's kind of how he died. Are you yeah. secretly you, you a confirm. vampire? <laughs> Do I look? Do I look? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, um, I'm undead now, so. But... Well, yeah. Um. Okay, final question for me. What's everybody's favorite moment that doesn't involve their own character? Oh, I love this question. I love know mine questions. right away. It's uh, Monique having the moment of like, well, Rose made me this uh, necklace <laughs> like right after I described it. And it's, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it was that me was describing it to Re and Re going, but I meant it in a yeah. platonic way. It's it's just the, the child of love literally going to you going, uh uh. Oh, huh? you're obli What do you mean you're oblivious? What do you mean? <laughs> you did this. You did you did this. What do you do mean? Do you know what the sad thing is? Is that Sasha's never gonna know that it actually happened after years of waiting and knowing. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Pain. Tragic. Pain and suffering. Tragic. Sorrows, yeah. sorrows, prayers, sorrows. Prayers, sorrows. I think, uh, like, my favorite moment, um, not involving uh, any of my characters, but I think my favorite moment is when uh, Faye realized that it was Dionysus and you just see the face drop and she goes, oh the shit. No, I love when you go, that's yeah. my dad. <laughs> that's <laughs> just like my you're going, dad. Is that your daddy? And you go like, oh no, it's my dad. <laughs> yeah. And just watching Theo go, Jezebel. <laughs> Jezebel being absolutely <laughs> fucking done with Dionysus the entire time that she interacts with him is so golden to me. As well, that, that interaction that she recently had with Theo, like, hey, at least you had a good relationship with your dad. He cared about you. That was so good. I, that was a that's what I was that fishing was so for. Good. I was fishing for that shit for so, so fucking long. He snapped your wrist and gave you back your sword after three days. I had to ask my dad if he had literally anything lying around that he could maybe give me. And he gave me a horn. 
That's, I... the, that's the crit awards clip right there. When yeah. they like, you know, like in the Oscars, when they like play like the the clip of something right before someone's about to win the award. I think that was my favorite Jezebel moment. So. So that involves I, my character, so I can't say that. Uh, I just, I just love how when she grows, like, do you realize how jealous I am of you? Like, oh, gut punch. Anyways. Uh, I think my favorite is uh, it's another Jezebel one, but it was uh, when we were all up discussing plans with everyone on the island, and Jezebel just went straight for Shannon's throat. The whole <laughs> fucking meeting. I was like, nope. this is. I don't know why. I'm, I'm. I'm. I don't know if this is character bleep, but this is cathartic for me. <laughs> um. <laughs> This is fucking you're like, great. No, you're being fucking stupid and you're going in the exact wrong direction. I thought you were supposed to be the smart one. <laughs> you're dumb. Good. You're stupid. Nobody dumb. likes you. You have no Ugly. brain Nobody cells. You. Oh. Ugly. And then no I look bitches. at myself in the mirror Ugly. and I go, dumb, stupid, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> dumb, stupid. And I look at myself oh, and I go, you're the reason one. I'm insecure. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I love clip so much. Um, I think my favorite moment of the campaign so far, honestly, I think a very, very early on moment was uh, Monique meeting Hephaestus. That whole interaction, like that whole thing was Solid. so wholesome and sweet and just uh, my heart was breaking the whole time. It was just so good. That's Three, still one probably my, one of my favorite moments, I think. Mm -hmm. I like when I if I'm showing so people a clip that I'm really proud of to be like this is how I DM mm -hmm. I show them that clip. It was yeah. a really you were incredible in that scene. Truly, yeah. like I was bawling. You both I were. was crying. It's great. <laughs> Iconic. Um, I it's uh, my favorite. One of my favorite moments is one episode where I wasn't even on. Is when <laughs> what's the name? Uh, Hannah when she was like I get a lot of prayers. Oh, what a that oh. line. Yeah. iconic <laughs> line. Impressed. It still hurts Never me. Never forget it. Yeah. That because I was running tech and I just went. <laughs> yeah. I prayed to you every night. Brutal. I get a lot of prayers. <laughs> Brutal. Truly, Myla died sing. in that moment. Truly, Myla was like, "Okay, the Dead gods are not and worth saving." Very. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, did everyone pick a moment i oh. i'd like to add a second runner-up which is like the season one finale of like myla and ash talking and realizing they're gonna leave and myla realizing by the flip of a coin that she's not gonna go see leo before theo before uh she leaves yeah it's wet. Heartbreak. Yeah. Heartbreak? That's heartbreak. the real part? Heartbreak oh, fun, fun fact about that. Fun fact about that. In the first episode that they ever had together, Theo chose heads on the coin because he knew it would always land on heads for her. And so she chose heads for him and it landed on tails. Oh, oh the Shut god that is the god is uh, <laughs> pain. Pain and suffering. <laughs> what a great episode i'm nothing if not here for callbacks guys mm -hmm. if you are not on the patreon go see that episode what a great episode that was what fun time wait is it on the patreon i think that's just a clip uh, is it, uh, that's just that one's yeah, published. published the one with hannah yeah. Yeah. oh yeah but the one with hannah is published me? yeah yeah gotcha you guys have to see that one that one is mm -hmm. hannah of Hannah plays no, the crit award winner. I will still not get over how you tricked us, you motherfucker. I will never forgive you. Uh, that you show up was, on the stream like oh, that was Maddie's genuinely on the stream, and for some reason I was like, why does Maddie have makeup on? Maybe she wanted to yeah. chill today. I was wrong. I was very wrong. I just like saw the stream overlay and I went, hmm. I think the stream overlay is wrong. And, and then, then Hannah starts talking. I went. Wait, wait, Hi, and just I'm Hannah plays D&D, and off the camera. Person, I was like, and these fuckers don't realize that I'm DMing tonight, and you guys just went, Ugh. 
we're not mentally prepared. So good. Because I wanted the idea to be that you've chosen the other side, so that means you don't get my DMing anymore. I DM the good guys. You get the other Ooh. you get the other DMing Hold style. On. Okay, that's messed up. Leave the morally gray children alone. Morally gray. Okay, morally gray. So okay. Because I, I wanted it I wanted it to feel we very are. different. Because you have mm, gone certainly down dead. Path. Oh. oh, she's ridiculously talented. We need to bring her back. Are really? ever going to see we love you, again? Hannah. God, I hope Probably. so. We'll I mean, work. if you find your old party members, you might. At least if you find their corpses. Woof. I've been Woof. actually dead. Really? You're freaking me out, dude. I don't <laughs> know. Who, who knows? They might be. Alrighty. Yeah. Aren't you, yeah, right. you going to kill them? We are at time soon. So if anyone has any final questions they would like to answer in the chat, Please feel free to chuck them in. Other than that, does anyone do any of you have any things you want to chat about? Any questions for me? Points you want to bring up and be like, hey guys, remember that point? What's going on? It's been I, half a season. I, What's the plan for tomorrow? We're gonna we'll record discuss a that session. Yeah. <laughs> no, like character wise. Uh, uh, get the fuck out. Uh, yeah. We gotta we gotta go. We gotta go, go, go. We gotta We're... go real fast. Say what's I... up. I'm gonna kill a Hydra. I mm -hmm. have a, a, cro a question of what do you think is a point where your character went into a crossroads of like, oh, this could have gone a completely different direction, or this went into a direction that I didn't expect it to, of like where Ooh. this character went. Myland, uh -huh. Ash excluded. <laughs> I was gonna say. Uh, they, they I was gonna that. say. Crossroads. Got a lot of crossroads. Like where you reached a point uh, where it all could have gone, you could have like fully gone in a different way. Like where you're right on the precipice of maybe turning evil, for example. I've never been, Monique's never Gosh. been at that point. All right, yeah. brag. Well, you have a <laughs> or maybe <laughs> just like at the precipice, maybe not of turning evil, but like abandoning the quest even. Because that would be a crossroads mm. as well. I think she she hasn't been at that point because abandoning the qu her qu the quest would be like abandoning her father. This is like her chance. This is her only way of getting him back. Um, mm. I love that. And I think she she has a very strong moral code. Her whole thing is like she she doesn't give up on things. Like she's she has only just basically gone. Marius is unredeemable. Like at this point, after he's killed Sasha. It took this long for her to be like, he's unredeemable. I can't keep forgiving him um, for all of the horrible things he's done. Um, but it's taken like 20 years. <laughs> so, um, yeah, she's got a very strong moral code. She hasn't hit that point yet. I have a second question when you guys finish your answers, because I'm actually curious. I also have a question. Um, crossroads, I guess? I mean... Theo could have went and looked for Myla and Ash, but like I that he didn't get a choice. So I guess that's kind of peace. I guess I guess there was like a moment way at the beginning where um Ash's sister, what's her name? Uh Kaya. Kaya. Gosh. Kaya was like, Yeah, you hate the gods too, right? And, <laughs> and Theo was like no, not in the way that you think. And I feel like if Theo responded differently, they he may have, I don't know, gone mm. with Kaya for like a hot second if he responded differently. Yeah. But no. Like Theo doesn't hate the gods. He wants to get their attention. And those are like two different things. So. Mm. What about think, the Jezebel? Uh, Jezebel, yeah. Jezebel could have gone evil if the timeline had moved up, if it had happened sooner to when she had actually met her dad, she would have been much more likely, based off of going off that rage, off of going with Myla and Ash. If that had happened, like, the day after, she really would have been like, yeah, easy, let's go kill the gods. All right. Mm. What's next we getting? Uh... <laughs> Do you guys want a Slim Jim? <laughs> like a Slim James. <laughs> oh my gosh. Slim yeah. James. Alright, 
my question was for the group is because I'm actually so curious. What do y'all think of Sasha right now? Because I don't think anyone's like properly because there's a lot of conflicting feelings here and I'm genuinely curious. Uh, what do I think of Sasha? I mean, it's like, more of a non-thought. I don't the, know, it's the, more action thought. More, yeah, more so not in just in general personality wise as in the betraying into not betraying into being dead into being mm -hmm. back and then kind of betraying again but kind of not at the same time more mm -hmm. that aspect yeah uh, i i think jezebel's very much in a place of understanding for like like most if not all of the demigods who have gone to the other side of like I get it, you're, like, blinded by shit, whatever, okay, but, like, you're acting like a dumbass, so that's very frustrating for me. Um, hmm. And, like, finding out, like, oh, Sasha didn't betray us? Awesome, even better. I don't have to spend 20 minutes to half an hour trying to convince them to not try and destroy the world. Better, <laughs> awesome situation. <laughs> less than ideal that well. he tried to kill us. Uh, less than ideal. Um, and, honestly, just, like, just the fact that, like, Monique and Annika were so upset that Sasha was dead was the point that Jezebel was like, well, if I can do something, like, that would probably be best because, I mean, I'm here. If not, like, no one really, uh, like, I'm not really liked here, so if I can do some sort of service, that's probably the best way to be, you know, kept around. So I should, I'll do something like that. <laughs> that's that's the sort of lane that she's kind of gone into. Um, I I I think for for Annika, Annika, um, it, honestly, is like it just is is more worried for them at this point, and spent most probably most of the time. It's kind of remained similar. It's just been kind of more just like worried for Sasha. Um, because like they understand why, um, like understands why he left, and then was also like is under the understanding. It's like he was influenced, you know. Like it, it makes sense. Like I get it. Um, and then now is like the fact that he tried to come back mean means a lot, and I think. It, kind of squashed any doubts in their mind that it was literally just a thing of just like I feel abandoned so I'm gonna go somewhere where I'm not abandoned like Annika understands like why so there there aren't any kind of negative feelings towards them anymore y'all were way more forgiving than I thought you would be love that for well, you guys. <laughs> listen I've known him a long, long time person. okay I, know that I have a question for Maddie um did how did Sasha treat Theo when he thought that he killed a kid? Mm. That uh, depends on a lot of my answer. It depends. Um, I don't think. Did Theo isolate himself? Uh, he would have just of known a, of you. Of a B. He existed in like group settings. I think he would have found you interesting and maybe propositioned you once just for vibes <laughs> oh um, but Theo's bi though so he's not gonna say no but like <laughs> okay well then was... as of now Sasha and Theo have canonically fucked, fucked. Wait, <laughs> oh, what, are you God. what are you like is this surprising I have dropped several hints that Theo is not straight yeah no he I don't think it's surprising you. that he he's not straight I just think it's surprising that um Sasha would be like yeah James, I'll tap that James just gave a fucking inspiration to Theo because he fucked Sasha yes <laughs> but also You're like the Lord's oh gosh. Gosh. Sasha's Sasha's been around so join the club it's a vibe oh, yeah He's Town the son of Eros, it happens. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, I'm gonna quickly, because there's food at my door, I'm gonna run and get it so it doesn't get stolen. And we'll wrap up with a final question. This one's very important. What's everyone's favorite dinosaur from Ultra Square? Go! 
I, D dinosaur? Uh, what? I thought yeah. I thought Ultra Square was like an actual piece of media. Hold on. Yeah. I uh, need to read it. It's not. It's not. This person. I, oh, I like I'm, Triceratops I'm, too. I'm particularly fond of a plesiosaur or um Acidon. No, no. I don't understand the question. Mosiosaur. Yeah. Mosiosaur. What kind of what's your favorite dinosaur? I wasn't a dinosaur kid. I I, I don't wasn't like dinosaur dinosaurs. kid either. I I'm actually dinosaur. just don't um, like dinosaurs. Like, I, I have like... a phobia of being eaten alive, uh, and I uh, have a yeah. phobia of mm -hmm. very big things. Uh, yeah, are, yeah, I had a very traumatic experience yep. in a shark cage. Uh, That's valid. In a shark cage? Wait, yeah. seriously? Yeah, I went mm -hmm. shark cage diving. I had a very, very bad time. This is this is relore. What the fuck? So you yeah, were in Jaws? <laughs> don't put I it like that. Even... I can't even Jesus go into aquariums Christ. anymore. <laughs> really? Wow. Damn. It really stresses me out. That's fair. Oh, Damn. What the fuck? This is insane. Yes, yeah, so so I, so I, so I don't like dinosaurs. And even looking at like fake T Rexes when they're above me. Uh, mm. I went to the Natural History Museum with Hulda. And we were going through mm -hmm. it. And I'm like, I'm, I'm getting cold sweats. I'm like, I up at hate this it thing. here. I'm, I'm getting cold sweats. <laughs> I'm like, I won't be yeah. here. How do you feel oh, about just... dragons? Dragon. Uh, so, I I like fighting dragons in D and D. I've always said to all of my DMs, like, "Hey, I have a hard line on you describing me being eaten if I'm being mm -hmm. eaten by something." Because I know in Dungeons Dragons, a lot of these monsters want to eat you. Um. So I'm like, so if I get bitten, that's fine. If they go to swallow, I'm going to tell you if you narrate anything from that point on other than telling me that it's I'm blinded and I'm taking acid damage, that's all you can tell me. That is all I'm going to write that down because swallowing effects in monsters is my favorite mechanic. Not for like thematic, you, just for yeah. like it it adds such an awesome element to like encounters where you're like we need to get there. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> It's honestly, it adds a, an extra sense of urgency to me. I once was Love in a game that. where we were fighting against a megalodon, and I got swallowed, so I banished the megalodon. <laughs> Incredible <laughs> therapy. What the actual? So fun. smart. Crazy lore. Thank you for sharing, Re. You're welcome. Well, no, I don't like dinosaurs. Anyway, <laughs> no. uh, well. I'd have to say I I am a fan of Jurassic Park. Uh, I've seen the first so one once. So just the so raptors, just the raptors being sneaky and like the sort of, I also just love the recreation of like the beginning scene when he's explaining how they use their claws and how they hunt. And then later it actually happens. And we love some girl. foreshadowing. Love that bit. Mm. But... Alrighty. Fuck, I love Ankylosaurus. Um, I remember once I was playing D&D &D and there was a group of dogs and the DM ran out of dogs so they just put out a dinosaur that was painted black that we then realized it was an Ankylosaurus and then one of the players fully deadpan and of course this was delivered out of the blue so it was probably the funniest thing anyone had ever heard in their lives just went woof woof says the Ankylosaurus died <laughs> deceased to <laughs> Oh my like god, that is so funny. Me slap it. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Holy shit. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with you. Anyways, thank you so much, everyone, for coming to our extremely <laughs> informative QA. We will try and do more of these because uh, we probably shouldn't wait until five episodes have happened because we forgot everything that occurred. We in had a lot episodes. of shit going on. There was a lot yeah. of hurricanes, yeah. conventions, Maddie's movement. Like, we had yeah. a lot of shit going on. All right. Uh, so join the Discord, follow people, uh, guys, subscribe on the Patreon. All right. If you, me... While we're on the, the ending, you know, uh, if you want to redeem any new things. Okay. Tips go. Please redeem. We won't have we won't have anything else otherwise. Let's yeah. Go. Donate to the Shaban family. Okay. Everyone say good night. We'll raid someone. Good night. Bye bye. We'll raid someone. Bye bye. Everyone go to Rolling for Charity. Love you bye.